Hello Math 8 students, this is Open Up Resources Unit 1, Lesson 16 on Parallel Lines and the Angles in a Triangle. Uh, before we get started on the lesson, I do want you to take a second and answer this warm-up question. Uh, uh, In-person students already did this in their calculators, but I still want you to have the experience of doing this to warm up. It helps us review our previous material. You do have a quiz coming up with all of this information, um, and so I really want to make sure that you're practicing this, uh, focusing specifically on making sure you're able to justify how you know. Don't just tell me the angle measure. Make sure that you're specifically referring to the properties that we've talked about that justify that answer. So pause the video until you have your answer here. And we can see that angle or line G is parallel to line H and it is cut by a transversal BE. The measure of, of angle FEB, so let's make sure we know what we're talking about. F, 2E, 2B, is this angle that I just traced out, and you can see that it's measuring 76 degrees. What is the measure of angle C, B, E? Let me trace that one out. C, 2B, 2E. What is the measure of this angle here? It's easy to see that those angles are congruent. They are both 76 degrees, but the question is how do we actually know that? We do know that because alternate interior angles are congruent. Both of these are on the inside of those parallel lines and they are on alternate sides of the transversal and not only are they on different sides of that transversal line but they are also um, on attached to different parallels, right? So there, this one is down here at the bottom parallel and this one is up here at the top parallel so we're switching which parallel line we're talking about and we're switching the side of the transversal. So again, this is what I'm talking about. You need to be able to justify your answer. We would justify saying alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay. Now we're ready to dive into the lesson and before we start talking about those parallel lines we have a quick secondary warm-up. Um, true or false computational relationships. Um, it's asking is each equation true? Now you might be tempted to actually calculate, to physically type into your calculator, mentally compute what each piece of these equations are. I don't want you to do that. We're looking at Math Practice 7, the structure of mathematics here. Um, so pause the video until you've answered each question, figuring out if they're true or false and then we'll continue. This first equation is false. And again, we do have to do a little bit of calculation on this one, not completely fully calculate, but I do see this is also like so simple to calculate, you almost can't help yourself from calculating it. And 60 minus 30 is 30. So without actually calculating 62 minus 28, I can see knowing that this is 30, is this also 30? And you can see very quickly that no, it's not 30. So this one is false because it is not 30. Um, other things to look at, 60, and we can see this number here is 62. They're pretty close. This one is bigger by 2. Uh, we can also look and see that this number is 30, and this is pretty close to 30, but it's smaller by 2. So think about this then. These numbers are pretty close to each other, right? Uh, but if I'm going to start with a bigger number than I am here, and subtract a smaller number than I'm subtracting here, obviously that's going to end up being a bigger difference. Uh, so that's another way that we can confirm that this is false. Moving on to the next one. Again, a lot of students in class made incorrect assumptions here, and they said that this was false when indeed it is true. And I'm going to calculate this one fully first, just to make sure that you're not making the same mistake as they are, and then we'll talk about how we don't have to calculate to confirm that it's true. Uh, 3 times negative 8 is <coughs> negative 24. That's three groups of negative 8. And we have 2 times negative 8. That's negative 16, but then we are also subtracting 8. And negative 16, subtracting 8, type it into your calculator if you need to, I hope that you realize that that is not negative 8, negative 16 we're subtracting so we're getting even smaller and we're ending up at negative 24. So actually calculating them we can see that they are both equal to negative 24. And again I kind of gave away the hint here when I see three times this number I see it as three groups 
of negative 8. So on the left hand side I have three groups of negative 8. And when I look over here on the right hand side I see that we only have two groups of negative 8. That's what this is showing in the parentheses. Two groups of negative 8. But hopefully you remember this from last year. Anytime I see subtract 8 that's the same as adding a negative 8. So I have two groups of negative 8 here but I also have right here is a third negative 8. And so I have three total here, two, and then a third one. So I do have three total negative eights there. And similar here, this one is also a true equation. It is a true statement. And I'm not taking the time to do 16 divided by negative two and 24 divided by negative two and 40 divided by negative two. I'm simply recognizing, hey, all of these have the same denominator. And since they all have the same denominator, it allows me to focus just here on the numerator. So focusing just on the numerator, again, I'm gonna do a little bit of calculation, but I'm not computing the whole entire thing. But 16 plus 24 is indeed equal to 40. So that tells me that this is true, even without me having to divide each thing by negative two. Now we're ready for the lesson. And uh, online learners, you do have an applet for this. I'm not going to be using the applet because I've spent a lot of time building this this little PowerPoint, so I'm going to use that PowerPoint. Um, but to get started, it says to rotate triangle ABC 180 degrees around the midpoint of side AC. Now in case I haven't mentioned this before, when we rotate 180 degrees, we don't have to specify the direction. For example, my hand is facing you. I'm going to rotate my hand 180 degrees uh, counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is going to go this way and my hand is now facing me. I'm gonna reset now. And now my hand, actually my hand won't do this. My hand it needs to rotate 180 degrees the other way and now it's facing me again. Uh, so the point is that it doesn't matter if we're going clockwise or counterclockwise, we're still gonna be facing this direction. And so that's why we start to be a little bit language or a little bit lazy with our language when we're talking about rotating 180 degrees and we don't say clockwise or counterclockwise because it doesn't matter. So 180 degrees around the midpoint of side AC. So my first step is to find side AC, found it, found that midpoint, and we're going to rotate 180 degrees around that point. So let me do that now. I'm rotating it, and of course I'm not using that geometry software, so I've got to move it into place, and that is the new position there. So step one completed. Step two says rotate triangle ABC 180 degrees around the midpoint of side AB this time. So now I'm finding the midpoint of side AB there's that midpoint, rotating at 180 degrees, which I hope that you guys are doing in the applet. It is going to get it into that position. And I did skip those steps actually. It says, once we rotate here, we're going to label that vertex D, and this new vertex is going to be labeled E. It says, look at the angles EAB, BAC, and CAD without measuring what do they add up to B. But that's a lot to think about, so I'm going to slow it down. E, A, B, I just traced out that angle right here, E, A, B. I'm going to go ahead and underline it in the same color. B, A, C, that's B to A to C, I just traced out this angle here. And C, A, D, that's C to A to D, I just traced out this angle right here. So again, it says without measuring, write what you think the sum of the measures of these angles is. Well, I can see the sum of those angles looks like it's a straight line. And as we've already addressed in our previous lessons, a straight line or a straight angle is going to add up to 180 degrees. So let's write that down, 180 degrees, because EAD is a straight angle. Okay, so is the measure of angle EAB equal to the measure of any angle in the triangle ABC? Let's think about what that's saying. Again, EAB, that's the one that we've colored purple. EAB is purple. Is it equal to anything else in this original triangle? Think about how we even got this triangle here in the first place, right? We did rotate that triangle. 
So when I rotate that triangle that 180 degrees, it ends up here. But what angle is that in the original? That would be angle A, B, C. I'm going to show you one more time. Only this time, I'm going to group that together so that when I rotate it into position, you can see what happens here. It's purple right now. Rotate it 180 degrees, and I'll have to slide it back into position, and you can see that it lines up perfectly there with ABC. So angle ABC, because it was rotated into place. to be angle EAB and remember that's a rigid transformation. A rotation is a rigid transformation so of course the angle is staying the same. And similar question but now we're focusing on CAD. So again CAD was the one that was orange. What about CAD? Does that have something in the original triangle? Sorry I skipped ahead. Let me actually color that one in purple now that we know it. And again, I hope that you're coming to uh, the same conclusion that we can rotate it back into place from where it originally was and we are seeing that it would of course be angle ACB. I'm going to go ahead and color that in now so I don't forget. And so again, that is, I forgot the letters, ACB. because it was rotated into place to be angle CAD. And remember, just like before, that means when we do rigid transformations, those angles are staying the same, and a rotation is indeed a rigid transformation. I'm trying to tie in everything that we've done so far in this whole entire unit. So, with that in mind, what are the measures of angles ABC, BAC, and ACB? Well, let's see. Green, purple, red, what do they add up to be? We already saw that here. Green, purple, red added up to be 180 degrees. So if I'm looking at green, purple, orange, I've been saying red, I meant orange. Green, purple, orange, then of course it's still going to add up to be the same thing. So it's also going to add up to be 180 degrees because they're the same angles. They're essentially the same angles as what we already added to form the straight angle. So 180 degrees because they are congruent to the angles that added to 180 degrees our straight angle. All right. Uh, that's actually it for this particular video. Um, we split this lesson into a couple of days and because this lesson in person took a little bit of time with our tracing paper and twisting that around and everything, um, it it took longer than this short 15 minute video. Um, but I'm hoping that now that you've seen how that whole thing works that you will go back and also use your applet uh, to make sure that you're getting that same practice with rotating those figures and seeing how they do add up to 180 degrees. Um, that's not anything new. We did already know that because of our uh, lesson that we did a couple videos ago. So it's nothing new, but we are taking the time to really make sure that it's hammered home, that it's really deep in our brains because your test is coming up soon. So you have a quiz coming up. You also have the end of unit test coming up soon. So we're just kind of using this to review and really solidify everything. Uh, so that's it for today's video. We'll see you next time.